I'm joined here today with Tyler McMurchy, the Media Relations Manager of SGI, to talk about their December report on Saskatchewan driving. So Tyler, what can you tell us about Saskatchewan driving over the holidays? Well, we saw a lot of uh, people um, uh, passing through check stops throughout the province of Saskatchewan because uh, police were holding a lot of check stops in order to uh, um, focus on impaired driving for the, the monthly traffic safety spotlight, which was, of course, uh, during the holiday season. This is something that uh, police focus on every year, uh, making sure that uh, people who are coming and going from holiday parties, visiting family and friends, uh, getting together uh, with uh, co-workers, um, that make, just making sure that they're making those good decisions uh, if those uh, get-togethers involve alcohol. And, uh, and we saw um, 361 impaired driving offenses reported by police throughout Saskatchewan for the month of December. Uh, now, considering we saw an unprecedented level of enforcement, and, and particularly when it came to check stops o over the holiday season, you have to understand that thousands of people would have passed through those check stops, uh, and the vast majority of them were making those good decisions and driving sober. Uh, but we we did see, un unfortunately, 361 people uh, driving impaired. What were some of the main incidents that happened over the last month? So this is a these are numbers that are reported to us by police. Uh, but um, so we don't get the details of each individual uh, arrest. Um, however, I did actually have the opportunity to uh, go on an impaired driving ride along with uh, a police service, uh, the Regina Police Service. And uh, the impaired driver that was caught during that ride along was uh, simply, you know, somebody uh, leaving a bar, uh, getting behind the wheel of a, of a vehicle with a, a very inebriated passenger. But unfortunately, the driver uh, had some alcohol in his system as well. And um, even though they had to only travel a few short blocks, uh, a police officer caught them. And it, it's important to remember that uh, police don't just use those highly visible check stops to catch impaired drivers. They're also out there on patrol looking for impaired drivers and, and that may include using um, uh, tactics like uh, an unmarked vehicle near a licensed establishment and if they see somebody getting behind the wheel and it appears that uh, they, they may have trouble walking to their car or may have other uh, indications that they they shouldn't be driving um, those people are going to get pulled over and uh, and questioned by police and uh, and that investigation will proceed from there and and in that case, you know, it was it, it could have it could have happened to anybody, but it happened to those people who made the decision that uh, even though the, you know a cab ride to their home would have cost probably under ten dollars, they decided to risk it, dr uh, get behind the wheel, and as a result, that vehicle was impounded. Uh, that that person um, was going to face further consequences as a result of already being a suspended driver as well, and uh, you know that's something that didn't need to happen. What is SGI's focus for this month and the future? So, uh, so for the month of uh, January, we have been focusing on intersection safety uh, with uh, a particular interest on uh, winter driving. Of course, uh, as you're approaching intersections, if the conditions are not ideal, um, it does increase the chance of a, of a collision. For the upcoming month, for February, we're going to be focusing on occupant restraints, which, uh, you know, that's a fancy word for saying seat belts and car seats. And we want to make sure that people who uh, are in a vehicle are properly restrained with the uh, uh, seatbelt or if they're a child, the appropriate car seat or booster seat for their size and age. Now we saw that big snowstorm yesterday. What are some tips that you can give drivers for driving on these icy roads? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, one of the things that people uh, need to understand about winter driving is that safe winter driving starts before you even uh, get in the vehicle. You should uh, call the highway hotline, and, and get an idea of the kind of conditions you're going to be dealing with, especially if you're going out on the highway. Uh, but even in town, you know, listen to the uh, weather forecast, understand uh, what the traffic conditions are like, where you're going to be going, and what the weather conditions are like that you're going to be dealing with and, and adjust your driving appropriately. You should also give yourself plenty of time to get wherever you're going if you do have to uh, head out. So uh, that means leaving a bit early, giving yourself time to fully clean off your vehicle of any snow or ice or frost that's on the on the, um, the windshields and, and the, the side windows, in addition to cleaning off the lights uh, front and back so you can see and be seen. Um, and then when you get out on the road, get a feel for how your vehicle is performing, how the, what the roads are like. Uh, drive slow using gentle acceleration and braking. Get a feel for how your vehicle is performing and make sure that you're driving at a speed appropriate for the conditions. 
Another thing that's very important is increasing your following distance. You don't want to be too close to that vehicle in front of you because you want to be able to have that time to react, to stop or to, uh, you know, switch lanes if, in fact, uh, they, they stop suddenly or uh, maybe their vehicle isn't performing quite as well as yours is in these uh, icy driving conditions. Thank you so much for joining me today, Tyler. Oh, you're very welcome.